Jerome Seveni has accused Robert Chagulanyi Sentamu and indeed NUP of rigging up to one million votes in the 2021 presidential elections. This, he says, was facilitated by gaps in election guidelines which allow the use of manual registers in cases where machines fail to work. The president was speaking at the Thanksgiving service of the late General Aronda Nyikirima in Amunyonyo. The controversies arising out of the 2021 general elections are seemingly not about to end for years after the elections, with President Yorim Seven accusing NUP of rigging one million votes. The president insists he has concrete evidence and anyone doubting can run to courts of law. I have now got all the evidence that in the last election, NUP cheated by one million votes. I have the facts. Noob can take me to court. <laughs> and the same seven has forced accusing them. But this is what happened. One million votes. President M7 says the existing gaps where polling agents are used to provide ground vote rigging, saying the law must be changed to cater for only electronic voting. The mistake was in the law. The law must be amended. The law must provide that if the machine doesn't work, you suspend the elections. Forget. If you say the machine is not working, but suspend the elections. On, 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 that, on, that, on that polling station. These claims have, however, been refuted by NUP spokesperson Joel Senyonyi, who says these are kicks of a dying horse and prove their claims that they had actually won the 2021 general elections. He, he knows what he did in the election because there were several military men at polling stations, all those videos were moving around, who are ticking ballot papers. I don't know if they told him those ones were commanded by NUP to do that. So it's ridiculous, it's laughable, but for us, it clearly shows, yes, he's feeling the population pressure because people are saying, no, we have had enough, we want change. I'm now joined by Councilor David Leus Alubongoya, who is uh, the Secretary General for the National Unity Platform, who is for us and with us this evening. Uh, Councilor, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, the President, uh, who is the largest consumer of intelligence in the country and possibly could be a candidate uh, for 2026, has accused uh, uh, your political party of rigging uh, the elections in 2021. He says he does have proof. Uh, do you realize the gravity of uh, these accusations, and are you taking them very seriously? Uh, what I can say uh, <clears throat> is that this is laughable, this is shameless, it's uh, really unbelievable that Genome 7 can choose the national unity platform of rigging elections when he knows so well that he engaged in massive election rigging. Uh, that election of 2021 has been described as an election from hell, given what the state under his command did engage in ballot stuffing, uh, rigged the elections with impunity, arrested our polling agents, uh, captured people who had our DR forms, uh, crime intelligence and police were busy picking up our, our, our polling agents who had our DR forms, uh, collecting them from the field. So how can a man who rigged the elections and everybody in this country and in the whole world knows that we had an election that was not free and fair, how can he come up to accuse the national Unity platform of rigging elections uh, is shameless. Uh, uh, perhaps you're also saying what he said, that the election was not free and fair. But you're saying it is laughable. The, the president who was in military wear was making these comments in a defense and security engagement. Besides being laughable, isn't there a place to take this very seriously? Well, for me, I find it very sad that he made such remarks at an event meant to celebrate a fallen hero, a man of integrity, the late General Aronda, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, General 7 shouldn't have made such, uh, you know, unfortunate comments at such an event to commemorate the life of uh, a gallant uh, officer uh, who served this country well. So it's, it's uh, very embarrassing. Do you have a take this. on the timing of this? I mean, it, it's clear that he's setting stage uh, for what he probably wants to do in the next election. You know, actually what he has said today makes you question his claim that the 1980 election uh, was rigged, which forced him to go into the bush. So it seems that 
Right now, he knows that he cannot win a popular election in this country, and maybe he's planning something else. So it seems that the election that he claimed was rigged and eventually used that as a basis to go to the bush and, you know, take over power and all that. You know, now Uganda will begin to question those stories. If he can say such a statement about an election which everybody knows how it went. Remember, it is this election when Genom Seveni uh, had over 400 polling stations where he got 100% of the vote, all cast in his favor. And meaning that none of these uh, uh, people who had registered on these polling stations ostensibly were absent on that day. None had died. None had transferred. All these people voted and voted for one person, which is, which is ridiculous by all standards, which is impossible. So he rigged the, this election. I mean, international observers, as you remember, were not accredited uh, to observe the election. I mean, you, you remember what happened. Then they started abducting our people, uh, doing all sorts of things. And this is a head of state coming up to shamelessly claim that it is a national unity platform which rigged. And he gives a figure of one million votes. You can but, imagine how ridiculous that is. Break down this for us. Since you are counsel and you've also taught law, yeah. the president has categorically stated that you can take him to court, but he's the president. Um, legally, can he be taken to court over this matter, or even when he has invited you to take him to court on this? Certainly, you cannot, uh, legally speaking, in the courts of Uganda, and that is why, with all the impunity that goes on there, but even legally speaking, he enjoys this immunity, which in many ways is the reason why he has decided to stick to power for all this time, because he knows that Ugandans cannot challenge him legally on these atrocities and the crimes he continues to commit and his uh, regime. But maybe there is a time when uh, there will be accountability for all this. So because are you planning to, to pursue his invitation that you take him to court? Well, what we can challenge him to do is to present his evidence, and we challenge our evidence. If Genome 7 says we rigged the elections, why didn't he allow this evidence to be presented in the Supreme Court? You remember they went after Justice Ezra Chisache, who uh, actually ruled that Honorable Chagulain should have been allowed to present his evidence before the Supreme Court. You know, so why did the state go so hard on her? Why did the state invest so much in making sure that the Supreme Court does not accept the evidence which we are trying to bring into the Supreme Court? And you, you remember everything they did. So if they know that they have any evidence which challenge them to bring it, and we bring ours. In any case, we've already said let there be an audit. Uh, of course, an audit overseen by people who are credible, by the international community, by the United Nations. And we shall present our evidence to show that Genome 7 and his regime, we have DR forms which were tampered with, which show that the, the votes which we got at polling stations are not the votes which the Electoral Commission, headed by the Awakama, announced. So we have all this evidence. And so if Genome 7 says he has this evidence, let him bring it, let us bring ours, let there be an independent audit of the 2021 election, and the people of Uganda and the whole world will see who actually rigged the election with impunity. F finally, the president makes a, a suggestion that um, the law should be revised because there were gaps in the law and uh, voting be limited uh, to electronic voting and nothing manual. Um, do you agree with him that that could help or that is also something you are against? The problem in Uganda is not laws. The laws are okay. It is just abuse of the laws. I've already told you that there were over 400 polling stations, 409 polling stations in particular, where he gave himself 100% of the vote. And if you look at the results, there are those he gave himself 99%, 80%, etc., etc. How is that humanly possible? Are you telling me that that happened because there was uh, uh, money voting or something like that? So it's not the law. It's not even uh, the, the, the kind of voting, whether money or biometric, the problem is impunity, that the laws which we have in place are abused and not followed. But, but all this to favor him. You remember, he appoints the Electoral Commission, make sure that the, the, the returning officers are vetted by ESO, the presiding officers are appointed by themselves. So how did NUP all of a sudden be the one rigging elections? I mean, how shameless could he be to make such a suggestion? Uh, David Leos Rwongoya, Secretary General for uh, the National Inter Platform, also um, a professor, if you could say, of law and counsel himself.